When Victoria was redesignated as Empress of India in 1876, her subjects basked in a little of the reflected glory. But if they wanted to feel they really were masters of all creation, they just took themselves off for an afternoon at the London Zoo. Here, as the century wore on, the growing numbers of strange animals testified to Britain's increasing domination of the world. The Zoological Society of London, the first of its kind in the world, was an imperial invention founded by the creator of Singapore, Sir Stamford Raffles, in a marriage between the 19th century thirst for knowledge and the accumulation of British colonies. We don't talk much about the empire now. It seems to be something that just belongs in our history, something that we've thought about, had judgment passed upon, and therefore need consider no longer. I don't think this will do. My book is about why Britain has, was seized with this urge to go out and conquer the world, and what that whole business did to us, because I think it still informs many, many aspects of our lives. It's there, for example, in the politics of a Tony Blair or a David Cameron, very obviously when they make decisions about sending troops to Afghanistan or to wars in Africa. But it's there also in the very small detail of our personal lives, the way we deal with one another, the sort of political arrangements we have in this country, the fact that we still have a monarchy. All these things are connected with our imperial identity. And as I say, our imperial identity was something that was the shaping force in our relationship with the world for hundreds of years. And just to pretend that it didn't exist seems to me to get us nowhere at all. So what I set out to do in the book was to discover why people were seized with this great passion and what it did to them. So there are stories about pirates in the Caribbean in the very early stages of empire. There are stories about people who went out to go to India and essentially plunder the place. There are stories about missionaries who went out to Africa or to India or to China. And there are stories about people who set out to govern the world. I say at every level, from the most superficial the fact that we seem to think ourselves still somehow special, different to the rest of Europe, special in the world with unique responsibilities, down to the most profound, our very genetic makeup. This is something that we need to think about, to re-examine, and that's what I hope my book is going to do.